The major indices have actually erased Monday's losses. And joining us right now to talk about that is Kevin Nicholson. He's co-chief investment officer of Global Fixed Income at Riverfront Investment Group. Also, Victoria Fernandez, the chief market strategist at Crossmark Global Investments. And uh, good to see both of you. Obviously, the market did a bit of a turnaround this week, the stock market, uh, looked at the big concerns on Monday about potential for growth and said, ah, never mind, we've got earnings here. Victoria, the earnings have been pretty strong. Is, is that the big deal? We just uh, decided we're going to focus on this and not that? Well, I think we've had so much in the headlines coming from earnings, and we're looking at this huge number, 60% growth in earnings for this quarter. And so I think it is dominating the headlines, but there's still a lot of uncertainty there. I, I think the growth concerns are still prevalent, but I think when you start looking at growth expectations going out the, the rest of the year, do we say we were at peak growth? Yes, we were. But are we still going to have decent growth going forward? And I think when people look at the overall economy and you say, OK, yes, we still have a consumer that is flush with cash. We still have a tremendous amount of liquidity in the market from the Federal Reserve. We have earnings that are going strong. And as the earnings calls tell us that they think the third and fourth quarter will still be decent growth potential, then you've got a market that says, OK, let me go ahead and continue to trend higher going forward. And I think that's what we will see the rest of this year, along with bond yields doing the same thing as some of those uncertainties come out and we get a little better script of what to expect for the rest of the year. Yeah, Kevin, um, the bond market does not seem to have uh, kind of thrown off those fears just yet. Does the bond market know something we don't? I don't know that it, it does uh, yet or not, but what the bond market is telling us right now is that they are concerned about growth going forward. Um, you know, we have a significant amount of negative yielding debt that's out there, uh, especially internationally, and that is starting to, you know, bring uh, buyers back into the U.S. And I think that that has caused, uh, put some downward pressure on yields, along with the fact that we have uh, uh, upcoming debt ceiling um, that could possibly be reinstated. And that's causing the Treasury to um, have to uh, pull back on the amount of supply that they're putting in, issuing into the marketplace. So I think that there are several things that are really pushing the bond market at this point. And of course, uh, you have the Delta variant that is weighing on uh, the markets as far as, you know, the bond market is saying that they're more concerned about growth than they are inflation at this point. Kevin, six months ago, would you have believed we'd be looking at the 10-year yield below 1.3 percent, especially when we've seen the growth we've seen in the economy and the, and the pretty strong jobs numbers that have been coming back, too? Absolutely not, Becky. I think that, you know, I think one of the times that I've been on your show, I've said that I thought that yields were going to end the year closer to that 180 to 2 percent range. And now uh, seeing that yields have come down as much as they have, I think that, we, you know, we'll continue to be below one and a half uh, through the summer. But as the Fed starts to taper later in the fall, I think that we will move back up into that one and a half to one and three quarters range by year end. Victoria, when it comes to the earnings, there, there have been so many indications of, of companies raising guidance, talking about the consumer being really flush. Are there areas where you're kind of seeing cracks, or is this like a pretty strong report across the board, and it's hard to see too many places at all um, where they're not knocking it out of the park? Yeah, it's been a really strong earnings season so far, Becky. I agree with you on that. I think where we're starting to see um, the cracks that you mentioned are probably going to be in the companies that are talking about passing through their price increases, because obviously that's going to mean the inflation story has to start changing just a little bit. We heard it from PepsiCo. We heard it from Coca-Cola. Unilever um, yesterday, we heard them talking about price increases because the inputs to all of their products, the prices are going higher as well. I think this is what we really need to pay attention to. The bond market, some of those yields have come down because the market started to believe what the Fed was saying, that much of the inflation concerns were transitory, even though I think we're all sick of hearing that word. Um, they thought the majority of it was transitory in, how, in uh, not housing, but in cars and in hotels and in airfares. But we do have to start wondering, does that switch and start becoming a little more permanent? And then inflation does start to rear its head again. And that's going to be in housing. That's going to be in rents. And it looks like it's going to be from these companies that have price pressures with their customers, and they're going to start passing those increases through. That's what I think we need to be listening to on these earnings calls. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.